How do you do? What is the American dream? The couple in our story knew because they lived it. He enjoyed a career as a successful doctor treating cancer patients, while his loving wife cared for their children in their beautiful home. But each of them suffered from a mysterious ailment they thought had no cure, until they found the right physician, and their hearts and minds and lives were unshackled. What's wrong, Jack? Oh, I'm in terrible pain. It's my eye. Oh, did you sleep on it funny? No, I think something's really wrong. Okay, oh, it hurts. Can I get you something? An aspirin? Oh, I can't see when I close my left eye. Marilyn, I'm half blind. This is Unshackled, dramatizing true life stories produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. There's more to life than material things, but. It's hard to change your life when you can't even change your clothes. That's why the mission offers hot showers, clean clothes, and a fresh start to all the homeless men, women, and children who enter our doors. Guests also receive wholesome meals and a bed for the night, all free of charge thanks to generous donations from our listening friends. Food and shelter can change someone's day, but it won't change their lives. That happens when mission counselors speak with guests individually to listen to their problems and the specific issues that brought them in. Then, they are invited to hear the truth that can bring them new life, which is what this program celebrates. Now, for broadcast around the earth, here is episode number three thousand five hundred fifty-eight in the series, Unshackled, the program that makes you face yourself and think. The man in our story dealt with suffering and death as a regular part of his profession. You'd think that would have prepared him for the moment when tragedy struck, but he wasn't prepared, and neither was his wife. You'll hear all about it as we bring you the classic true story of Jack and Marilyn Sternberg, right now on Unshackled. I met Marilyn right after medical school. We lived in Ohio and came from a culture that was hard to find there, so we never ran out of things to talk about. College was a huge culture shock to me after growing up in New York City. Oh, I know what you mean. My hometown was mostly Jewish. The school closed on Jewish holidays. Right. I didn't know Christmas from Easter until I moved. <laughs> I thought the whole world was Jewish. <laughs> Then, when I was nine years old, my family moved to Lansing. Lansing, Michigan. They're not exactly known for the Jewish population. Well, I bet I was the only Jew in school. I, I didn't mind until some bully called me. Uh, well, he he used a slur. What did you do? I couldn't control myself. I punched him right in the face. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> the other kids respected me after that. No one made fun of me ever again. My high school was mostly Jewish. I didn't know many Gentiles until I went to college. Oh, I made a lot of friends in Lansing, but we were only there for a year. My parents didn't want me to have Gentile friends, so they put me in a conservative Jewish Bible school. I used to go to a conservative temple on Saturday mornings. How was that? I couldn't understand a thing. Most of the service was in Hebrew. I I gave up after three weeks. Well, I I've only known you three days, but I hope you won't give up on me. No, why would I ever do that? Well, I'm afraid you might not like me once you get to know me. What's not to like? I should probably tell you, I'm divorced. I have a child, a little girl. Marilyn had a daughter from a past marriage, but that didn't scare me off. I thought I could do anything if I worked hard enough, be a good husband, father, and doctor all in one. Marilyn and I got married three months after we met. I adopted her daughter, and we had a child of our own. I finished my residency. And when I decided to be a cancer specialist, we moved to Houston for more medical training. I expected big changes in my life, but I didn't know the biggest change would be on the inside. How was your day, Jack? <sighs> Not great, honey. Well, what's wrong? I wasn't prepared for the terrible things I see at the clinic. A thousand people suffering from this awful disease. I don't know how you do it. Your work is so important. Whenever I do my rounds, I see people praying. It makes me wonder: Why does God allow good people to suffer like that? Where is his love and mercy? Are they still building that chapel in the hospital? Yeah. Who are they kidding? Honey, 
I'm beginning to hate Houston. When we moved here, you were so sweet and emotional. You cried easily. This place is changing you. It's making you cold. My business is tough. You can't afford to be emotional. It's not true that I never showed emotion at work. One emotion I showed a lot of was anger. I demanded perfection from all my staff. Here are your tools, Dr. Sternberg. Thank you. With no sterilizer? Oh, I- I'm sorry. Let me get you some. Did you forget all your training over vacation? I'm sorry, Doc. You want me to do surgery with dirty tools? <gasps> this is a hospital, not a candy store. There's no room for error here. <laughs> Accomplishments meant everything to me. How many papers I had published, how much money I earned. I decided I could make a fortune starting my own private practice. I quit my job and began my search for a new home. So you don't have a job? Don't worry, we'll find something. One of my professors just told me about a group of doctors in Little Rock, Arkansas. He said they've been looking for someone like me for three years. Little Rock? Yeah, I'm flying out there next week. You're moving us to Little Rock? When are we going to have a stable life? Soon. Come on, honey, I think you'll like it there. The middle of nowhere? I bet they'll love a Jewish family moving into town. Despite Marilyn's objections, I couldn't believe the good fortune of getting a job offer right when I needed it. Little Rock had a small Jewish population, but Marilyn found a good community and became involved in several Jewish organizations. Our kids loved school, and our phone rang off the hook. Being successful felt great. And then I began to notice things about my patients. You have two different kinds of patients? What do you mean? Some people are impossible to take care of. No matter what I do, it's never enough. Then the second kind of patient is so appreciative, even if they're still suffering. And you treat all your patients the same? Of course. But one thing I noticed, the most appreciative patients are always praying. I heard one patient thank Jesus right in the middle of intense pain. Can you believe that? Weird. He was thanking... Jesus. Jesus for pain? Yeah. These patients, the ones who pray, they don't worry about their cancer like the others. They don't seem to need as many painkillers either. Do you think they're not afraid to die? They're not. They don't think it's the end. They think of it as the beginning of something greater, a new life in heaven. That's so presumptuous to be sure they're even going to heaven. One patient told me that he accepted Jesus Christ as a savior, so he knows he's going to heaven, or saved, as he put it. I wish I had that kind of faith. I believe in God, but I still worry about plenty. Money was not on our list of worries. We had a beautiful new home with a swimming pool, and we both drove new cars. But spiritually, we were lost. We kept asking each other, is this all there is? We tried exploring new things, like taking dance classes, but we still felt empty. Then came the morning when I woke up half blind. I went to see an eye specialist. I don't know how it happened, Jack, but your instincts are cracked. You have optic neuritis, inflammation of the optic nerve. I've just become blind in my right eye overnight. It may be temporary. I hope the pain at least is temporary. It hurts to move my eye. Sometimes the inflammation spreads to the other eye, causing complete blindness. And there's no cure? I'm afraid not. Not yet, anyway. Now I know how my cancer patients feel when I can't heal them or offer any hope. I have to be honest with you. Sometimes optic neuritis is an early sign of multiple sclerosis. That disease will destroy my mind and my career. What are the odds? There's a 20% chance of developing MS. I can't believe this is all happening to me out of the blue. Why is God letting this happen? Fear took control of me for the first time in my life. As I drove home, depressed and crying, I talked to God. What right do you have to take my sight? How am I going to help all those cancer patients? You won't help them. Why would you make me blind so I can't practice medicine? Is, is this what you call wisdom? And love and mercy? If so, I don't want any part of it. Either that or you don't exist. I'm giving up on you. I'm a scientist. I need proof. I need things to make sense. And this doesn't make any sense to me. If you ever show me proof of your existence, then I may consider you again. 
Until then, goodbye! <laughs> we'll learn the result of that challenge in just a moment. Here's the president of Pacific Garden Mission, Phil Kwiatkowski. Thanks, Timothy. Though blessed with a family, career, and wealth, Jack lost faith at the first sign of tragedy. At Pacific Garden Mission, many guests find faith for the first time when tragedy brings them through our doors. One of these guests, Benita, came to the mission after struggling with heroin addiction for 25 years. She thought she had hit rock bottom. Then, other women embraced her and invited her to join the Women's Bible Program. God used other women in the mission to free Benita from the shackles of addiction and mold her into the mother and grandmother she wanted to be. Now, she helps other women at the mission as a substance abuse counselor. She says, God has turned the negative into the positive. Every time I think of my life, I think of Romans 8:28, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. The Women's Bible Program, along with all the life-changing services at Pacific Garden Mission, is offered free of charge thanks to generous donations from our listening friends. Now, it's easier than ever to donate as much or as little as you like to help Chicago's homeless men, women, and children. Visit our website at pgm.org and click the big red Donate Now button. For more information about how you can help, please get in touch with us. The address, Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Email us at unshackled at pgm.org. Visit our website at pgm.org. I felt helpless. Seeing my husband angry and in pain was like torture. I believed I had God in my heart, but I didn't know how to ask God to help my husband. Then, one day, he came home with a radical request. You know, Marilyn, I have no idea why we still belong to the temple here. I don't get anything out of it, or God. He doesn't care about my pain or anyone else's. I don't even think he exists. You want to quit the temple? Jack, no. I'll always be Jewish. It's in my blood. I'm proud of my heritage, but the religious part, I can do without. I'm an atheist now. Oh, you can quit if you want, but I don't want to quit and the kids go to Hebrew school. Yeah, kicking and screaming all the way. What's the point? My parents will be upset. They're back in Cleveland. They won't know. I'm going to write a letter to the temple and tell them we're dropping our membership because it hasn't met our spiritual needs. Quitting the temple wasn't so bad. I still had God in my heart. Jack's health stabilized. Then, in September 1980, my comfortable world fell apart. Dr. Sternberg. Jack. Honey, what's wrong? Mother just called. Dad, my dad has cancer. Oh, honey. Tell her to bring him here for treatment right away. She said it's the type of cancer you can't treat. What does she mean? We can't treat all types of cancer. No. It isn't fair. I know. I'm sorry, honey. I wish there was something I could do. My father died five weeks later. At the funeral, my mother said, Your daddy was here one minute, and the next minute he just disappeared. Her words echoed in my ears all weekend long. Ten men performed the Kaddish, a prayer for the dead in Hebrew, and the rabbi read the 23rd Psalm from the Bible. But I couldn't concentrate. I kept hearing my mother's words, He disappeared, and I don't know where he is. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He disappeared, and I don't know where he is. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Where is my father? Where is my father? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I wish I could just be alone to grieve, Jack. I know, honey, but we have to follow tradition. I don't understand why we're doing all of this. 
Why are we covering all the mirrors? How will that help mother feel better? And, and why are they feeding us? I have no appetite at a time like this. They're feeding you to fill the emptiness. Nothing could fill the emptiness in my heart. That day, I learned that I wasn't keeping God in my heart like I thought. I was keeping him in my pocket, like something I only took out when I needed help. That night, while my family slept, I snuck into the bathroom and cried for an hour and a half. Then, I prayed my first real prayer. God, where is my father? A month later, a friend told us a shocking secret. I had to tell Jack about it right away. Jack! What is it? Did you know our old friends Charlie and Linda have been going to church? What do you mean? Why are you saying church? They're going to a Christian church. There must be some mistake. They're a proud Jewish couple. Always have been. I'll call them right now and clear this up. Hello? Charlie, how are you doing? Listen... My wife just told me the funniest thing. What's that? She says you and Linda have been going to church. Can, can you imagine? I told her the two proud Jewish people would never set foot in the church. Jack, I have to tell you, I wasn't always proud of my heritage. But after hearing what the Bible says and learning more about Jesus Christ and what he taught, I'm very proud to be Jewish. What? Linda and I and the kids love going to church every Sunday. I have to see this for myself. Charlie, can we come to church with you tomorrow? We'd love to have you join us. We thought everyone at church would see our Jewish family coming a mile away, but no one stared or said anything negative. Instead, they shook our hands and welcomed us warmly. The church set up in a humble gymnasium with no decorations or fancy architecture, but no one seemed to mind. I expected a culture shock, but when the service began, the pastor said, Hear, O Israel! The Lord our God is one Lord. I recognized it as the holiest prayer in Judaism. The pastor announced he was speaking from Deuteronomy 6 in the Hebrew Scriptures. I immediately relaxed. Do you ever look around you and see wicked people succeeding at everything at life? <laughs> Nothing bothers them. They have wealth, fancy cars, and they don't care about who they hurt. You might ask, if bad people get what they want, what's the point in following God's word? God has an answer. He says in the book of life, the wicked might have the first few chapters, but you have the rest of the book forever and ever for all of eternity. I looked down and realized that Marilyn and I were holding hands. The gym was absolutely silent, and we both felt, for the first time in our lives, the presence of God. Wasn't that wonderful? That was incredible. Marilyn, I have faith in God again. But Jack, I, I could never accept Jesus Christ. I, I believe that he lived as a person and that he was a good teacher, but I don't believe that he's the Son of God. Hey, Jack. I'm so glad you came to our church. We're having lunch at our house later. Want to join us? Over lunch, Charlie taught us that anyone, Jew or Gentile, can be a Christian. A Christian is anyone who trusts Jesus Christ as their Savior. A Jew can be a Christian? Most of the earliest Christians were Jewish. The New Testament was mostly written by Jews. Oh, you're kidding. The Bible is the inspired Word of God but he used Jewish people to do most of the writing. Now, what about sin? Everyone is a sinner, meaning they do bad things that separates them from God, who is perfect. In the Old Testament, God gave us many complicated rules to follow in order to cleanse our sins and start fresh. A and none of us follow those rules today. It's impossible. Right. I thought all you had to do was be moral and do good works. In Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6, God says... But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. That sounds so archaic. So we're all sinners, no matter how much good we do? 
God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to pay the price for all our sins. He's the only hope we have. And all you have to do is believe that he died for your sins and receive him as your Savior. I'm ready to do that. Marilyn, you can't accept Jesus today as a Jew. You don't know enough to make such an important decision. Tomorrow you might tell another Jewish person what you've done and he'll ask you questions you can't answer. A man at our church is teaching a five-week Bible study. Why don't you study with him? You said you have a question, Jack? I asked someone why we don't have to follow the laws in the Old Testament anymore. He said that God changed his mind about those laws later on. What does that mean? I think I can clear things up. <laughs> Turn in your Bible to Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. That means nobody could keep the old laws, so God decided to find a new way for people to be cleansed of their sins. Orthodox Jews are expected to keep more than 600 laws. That's why God in his mercy created an easier way for us to come to him. Because he's a just God, someone had to pay the penalty for our sins. So he sent his son Jesus Christ to live on earth as a man, a Jewish man, by the way, and to face the same things that tempt men into doing the wrong things. Jesus never sinned, but he was sentenced to die on the cross. His perfect sacrifice paid the penalty for everyone else's sins. Why isn't Jesus mentioned in the Old Testament? He is. Take a look. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. I looked up the verse in my Hebrew scripture. It says the same thing. Verse 8 says, He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. Jesus fulfilled all the Old Testament prophecies. Does this mean if we believe in Jesus, then we're saved? We're guaranteed to eternal life with him in heaven? Believing in Jesus is a good start. But to be saved, you need to receive his gift of forgiveness and then believe that he is your Savior, the only one who can save you from your sins. I think I'm starting to understand. I wanted to be sure I understood where the scriptures were leading me. Jack and I plunged into our Bible studies. One hour a week grew into six hours. Sometimes we stayed up until two in the morning discussing what we'd read. I wanted to receive Christ, but I was terrified that my mother would disown me and my Jewish friends would abandon me. Then I saw something that changed my mind. Hello? Charlie, I just became a Christian. That's wonderful, Marilyn. You prayed to receive Christ. Yes, and I'm so excited. It's like I had this evilness inside my heart that just flew out as soon as Christ came in. I have the most incredible feeling of joy and peace. What finally persuaded you? Yesterday in church, I saw a woman wearing a Star of David with a cross in the middle. I realize that accepting Jesus won't make me any less Jewish. It makes me even prouder to be Jewish because my Savior lived on this earth as a Jew. That's exactly how I felt. What does Jack think? I haven't told him yet. I'm waiting for him to come home so I can tell him in person. Hi, honey. How was your day? Just wonderful. I finally received Christ and became a Christian. Oh. That's nice. That probably wasn't the reaction she was looking for. Honestly, her news made me a bit nervous. I knew I'd feel more pressure to become Christian, but I wasn't ready. Like Marilyn, I feared my family's reaction. But five days later, I too confessed my sins and received Jesus Christ as my savior. The first person I told was a patient who noticed something different about me. My staff immediately noticed a change in my demeanor. Your tools, Dr. Sternberg. Thank you, Nancy. Oh, the biopsy needle's missing. Could you get it for me, please? Why, sure. Um, Is everything okay, Nancy? I, uh, aren't you going to get angry? Look, Nancy, I'm sorry about how I treated you in the past. I try not to let little things upset me anymore. Oh, I don't know what's gotten into you, but I hope it's here to stay. Everyone noticed the change that took place in me as soon as I became a Christian. It was the best decision Marilyn and I ever made. 
Christ changed our lives, our marriage, our children. And my medical practice. He filled a void that nothing else could fill. He's the answer to every human need. If you don't know the answer, start asking questions. Jack and Marilyn Sternberg both went on to share their testimonies through the Jews for Jesus organization, helping many others discover that no matter what your background, you can find hope and salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. In the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me listening friend. Christ is the only way to God. Please don't let anything stand in the way of your salvation. Eternal life hangs in the balance. If you cannot think of any sound reason why you wouldn't want to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, won't you pray with us now? Heavenly Father, I admit that I am a sinner and that I need Jesus Christ to guide my life and lead me away from bad decisions. Please come into my heart and bring me the peace and joy I need to face the stress and tragedy that's a part of life on this earth. Thank you for your sacrifice and for your promise of eternal life in heaven. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.